Well, today's project is on our anti-pearl Mercedes Sprinter camper van. And it's a great wee van, but one of the things it's really not good at is uh, the original sound system in the van is this little uh, radio player and CD player. So I've been looking around trying to find a replacement for it and uh, I find this one online very like there's no messing it's just like here's what you get it's a car multimedia system and inside the box as we open it up it has and does what it says in the tin there's a i find it actually online what what really i liked was the company uh, MS Automoto have got a, U, a YouTube clip of how to actually uh, it's uh, just how they tested it and and they showed every button and everything and a great YouTube channel and that really helped me decide yeah that's the one and just in conversation with them as well this company really really good at getting back to me uh, very quickly with any questions like how to get it delivered to the Isle of Man. So it's very simple, it's just a little multimedia unit and lots and lots of different cables that we have to find out where they all go. But there is also a YouTube clip of how to uh, install it so they don't leave you. And again, any questions, you need three hands to be a videographer these days. <laughs> and any questions, they, they get it to us. So first things first is to remove the, the plastic panel around our uh, radio player and this little storage pocket, which is really handy. I'm going to miss it, but uh, I'm going to replace that with the one unit of the multimedia system that we've we've just purchased. So just I'm using a screwdriver. I know you're going tut, tut, tut. You're going to scratch it. You're going to do this. But actually, it just, I don't have my plastic ones here. So you just tuck in behind gently gently just pops out of its screws just work its way along pops out of its little clips and very quickly as you go down and round pop out all the clips and it just pops off uh, it actually brings off the connection at the bottom to your hazard lights so as it pops off you'll see that there is a, a little connector just here and that's a connector for the hazards etc on that and the lighting on there so we just unplug that and remove the fascia it's gone and you can start to see what's inside and it's these little torx uh, screws that we're going to take out now one at a time so i've got my torque bits and my drill set at a very very light level and i'll just help zip those out very quickly so i'll Actually, that one doesn't need to come out. That holds. That doesn't hold the thing in. This is the one I want. There we go. And I'm just going to go around now and remove all of the Torx bits. I'll not bore you. And once the Torx are all taken out, we can just literally just pop out the little storage unit. And then also the media unit actually lifts out as well and you can see the plenty of room in the back for the wires we're going to put in but there it's just connected There's two little clips here and the aerial here which just unplug really really simply <laughs> and they're right like that so giving up need both hands now so i've gone and got a little uh, camera holder uh well i'll show you the next bit as we get in here into the the guts of the actual mercedes by the way this is a mercedes 2010 sprinter that's been converted into a camper van so that's hence why uh, the uh the technology is quite old in it um i've removed some other bits here at interest there was a, a v Do a, a tachometer that was there there on the on the set I removed it and put in extra uh, USB chargers and the charger that powers my little dash cam as well. So it's all connected in through there. Um, and now just replacing this unit. Uh, the 
clip, the connectors that we have that come with it, the adapters that come with the, the new one, just click into here and there's a new adapter to go onto the aerial and go into the, the new unit as well. And we're also going to fit a new GPS aerial into as well because the new system comes with its own GPS. So out goes my TomTom. Uh, -tom. Uh, and also it's got Bluetooth hands-free. So out goes my Parrot Bluetooth system as well. And this one unit will be my radio, my GPS, my Bluetooth, and uh, yes, internet access and things as well if you want. But uh, let me show you how we install it into the next stage. So in our box, we've got, I'll unpack it here. This is the new head unit that replaces the... Uh, the radio and it'll sit in there I've got to check as well the size and the screws were that it was the right fit there was a lot of ones on the market but actually some of them just are not sure if they would fit into the mercedes sprinter inside we've got other additions as well there's the can bus decoder that has to be connected in as well and there is the adapter changer for the the radio uh, from what i have there's the uh, hands-free for the microphone and there is the GPS aerial as well all in place with all the different sockets that we might need and then there's also for whatever style of Mercedes you've got there's the converters that go from the, the the plugs that we have click into here and they are then converted to the new system as well you see how that works very easy so this is the one for us and uh, it'll work very easily to get to the right speakers and the right power cables, etc. There, and uh, and then there's the additional. If I was putting my uh, reversing camera in as well, I have my reversing camera above here. I don't think you can see it. Let me do a little just rise up. Yep. So my reversing camera actually comes in to this module here. I could combine. I could be really clever, but I actually like that. It's like a rear view mirror and i can click it on at any time so this gives you all the different uh videos in videos out and uh, subwoofers and anything else my system is very basic so i probably won't need this cable at all but that's this stage of what's in the box now we want to connect the the cables in and wire in the the, the gps and i want to mount the gps just here in my, on, on the front of my dash so get a good signal for the GPS. Well, to run the um, GPS aerial into the car and receiver, um, what I had to do was I unscrewed, again, this side, which is the vents, popped it out to one side, and there's another screw here, and that lets us get access to feeding the aerial, which has got a sticker on it. I want to put it just in the center here so i was able to feed the cable through and under and into the the loom area of the unit i'm going to do the same uh with my hands free so that it's fed through the same area uh, and i'm going to bring out the other side so it is sitting more here near where i would speak normally on the uh on the front again it's got its own self so i choose an area that I think the microphone will be very accurate and pick up myself and any passenger. And then we can put that in place as well. So I'll run this in probably down the other side, but doing the same thing to feed it into this area out through the speaker and up there. So that'll keep it tidy. So I'll do that now. To help you see better, not only have I removed the air vent fascia on this side, but also I've taken out the top little parcel shelf out of there so I can get access easy enough and nothing's getting in my way. Everything comes apart. It's very, very simple. It's like Lego or do you remember that other game? What was it called? The Meccano sets. Everything just comes apart so easily. So now I'm going to run in these cables that are on the outside so that they're nicely tucked in and into the wiring loom area. So once I've wired the microphone through the, the loom, I need this all of these cables just to get the one that is the hands-free microphone input into there and then clip that into the little housing circuit on the box so that clips in and that's all that cable of course there's plenty of room at the back there 
for all this just to, to fit into lovingly. So that'll be good. Get that in until it clicks. There we are. Uh, also, we have an adapter for the um, for the area, so that slots into this point to join up with the old style of aerial and uh, I put it somewhere safe <laughs> it's just this little one so that'll go in click that in there and click that in there and that's now connected to the aerial on the roof which hopefully is working well the one beside it with the little red rubber protector is your GPS. So that pops off and the GPS will screw onto that. Um, let me screw it off. And then the GPS is this one and it screws onto the thread. I can get a wee spanner if I need to, but I think hand tight will be fine and dandy. Tight enough so it definitely doesn't come off over time on the back of the, I don't want to have to do this again. So that is our radio in, our hands-free in, and our GPS signal in. And if you had a DAB radio as well, it would go in before I would do the next stage. So now I've got my cables. I now want to connect my old style sockets to this new unit. Everything is already um, logged up so it should be just a matter of clipping in and clipping in so I'll pop them in here like so and then I've got each of my little connectors here my speakers on this side and then plugging in the smaller units here. here. Let me spin this round so we can see. At this stage as well, we get to plug in the CAN bus decoder. Yeah, that sounds an interesting one. So we'll put it in, it clicks onto here. <coughs> here. And that's it in place. So we get the encoder in place, reversing camera if I need it, the, all of that just for the hands-free. And we've got the little clip coming on the, the return from this into the unit. And that is it. Everything is now clicked into place and we can have a little play. I'll just check all of these little clicks again just to make sure they're all fully home and that should be us okay very good all right should be ready to put it all back in again and uh and return all the bits and pieces got some leftover bits that we don't use for a different type of radio and of course the other wiring loom was there as well um that we don't use uh, it's for a different model of a car. And uh, and that's it. So next stage, I'll put it all in and let you see how it sounds. So uh, I've not fully installed it in place yet, but it's in uh, and working. Works with just the key on. I was hoping it might work without the key. I must read the instructions, see if there's a way to get around that. But uh, it's come up. You've got your nav, radio, music, and Bluetooth. So... It says it comes pre-installed with the sat nav offline. So I'm gonna try that, clicking on the nav and uh, loading IGO navigation, it says. Um, and it's firing up. Here we go, loading up from the disc. And there we are, external power connected. Okay, that's good. Looking for GPS signal, the moment of truth. still looking for the GPS signal. I can see the GPS signal. Okay. 
that's the dog told. Okay, it's found the GPS navigation and it's telling me here's where I am. So I can do all my routes and everything from there. So GPS is working fine. Let's try the next thing. It's a great size of a GPS, very easy to look at and follow. I'm going to try now and go back to our, that's our nav. So I want to go back to the menu and uh, try our radio. Let's see if that can detect all my radio stations. So the way that you do it here is that you, you find your radio station and then you program it and drop it in and do the next one and you can program all there. I wonder, is there a kind of automatic doot, doot, you know those? Uh, I'll have to read the instructions really, you know, it might be the wise thing to do. <laughs> Did there we go, we got a radio station. And it was pretty dull. But the most entertaining thing we did was trying to get in all the um, all the family selfies and videos and just try and photobomb everything. So there are lulls to be It'd be nice to have some music, but there you go. So it works. It works. So that's back to menu. Oh, go to the radio again. I want to switch that off. Switch it off. Then go to. Uh, Music, I don't have anything plugged in. That's interesting. I found some of the things we've got to plug in yet are the two USB, so it can go straight into power. And uh, there's another one for music, uh, but it's got Bluetooth that I'm going to use to with my phone. I'm going to try and connect that to my phone and see if that works. And that'll be my last thing to test. And then I'll whack it all in again. But uh, yeah, very pleased with that. Very simple to do. And it all seems to be working fine. Very good. Okay, so we've uploaded, find Bluetooth, connected to this phone and uh, uploaded all my contacts as well. It's very good. So let's see if I can use it now. So look for contacts, search. Um, let's try it looking for my missus. Ah, sadly, when the phone answered the f the video, <laughs> when to phone call. So yeah, works perfectly. Just phoned, uh, phoned the missus there, really good. So let's go back. So we've tried our Bluetooth. Um, let's see if we can get Bluetooth music on the go. What have we got? So yes, I've tested all the parts of it, working absolutely brilliantly. Got the phone call, got the Bluetooth music, everything is working great on that. Very happy with that indeed, and very easy to install. So, and then the final thing is the EQ of the system. We can actually start to get a song playing and play with the EQ, because the, the speakers are probably one of the next things that I will upgrade in the system. But hey, Adventures of Adrian Porter, just fitting a new multimedia system into my camper van. I'm very pleased with that. Okay, catch you again soon. Bye for now.